Okay, so we've inserted our bit into the ER collet and we have got the blade set here. So now we're ready to fit it to the and adjust it to length and size and all that good stuff. We're going to need to move this out or screw this screw back in that we talked about here in the last video. Okay, so we'll slide this in and now we need to rotate the blade in such a manner that we can access it and get it parallel with the slot. We loosen up this screw. Bad habit. So now we can rotate it. Now this blade is quite small so it's a little bit tricky so when I'm doing one of these putting one of these little bitty things in I use a magnifying glass. Maybe your eyes are better than mine, but. So I'm gonna set it up, okay. That's our vertical position here. Now I also wanna move this thing further forward, which means that I need to drive, put my screwdriver further back into the hole. So you can use a block of wood, which is probably highly preferred over doing it this way, but I'm just gonna push on here because, well, it's my machine and I can do it. So I'm gonna slide this up here. I'm going to align my bit into that little groove and now I'm going to tighten this back up and it's highly preferred to use a block of wood too. These are proto this is a pre-production prototype machine. The difference between this and the production run, this is stainless steel in the production run. This is made out of 7071 aluminum. So right now we are set up to grind this little bitty blade. So here we've got this, uh, we've got our, our driver blade that we want to sharpen and a proper point. We've got the, the chuck lined up. We've got this portion tightened up. And now what we need to do is tighten up this a little bit and see these pins over here? We don't want those pins to take the whole brunt of a tightening project. So we'll just get a snug fit on it. We can retract the chuck, the sleeve, the extension, whatever you want to call it, back a little ways. And now we will tighten this up so we're clear of this. So we're not going to put any pressure on those pins. So we'll do this. And there's always some drawback on an ER collet, which is one of the reasons that I highly prefer the three jaw chuck because when you put it in and you have it set it's there. Now you might think that this might be hard to grind this little blade but actually it is not. I'm going to set it in here and just like on any other bit we're going to put it horizontally here. We want to make this thing to where it's just touching the blade before we start any grinding. So we're going to turn it on and so now we're going to lower this down and if you'll notice up here on your marks this makes the bit littler this makes the bit thicker so if you want to go up in the air turn it this way in the direction of the bigger and this makes it smaller so right now we're going to tickle it down a little bit further until it just touches the the cutter and we'll hear it by sound you'll notice the sound change when it touches There we go. It's touching, so I'm going to turn it over. And we can hear it touching on this side. Contrary to popular belief, screwdriver blades are not necessarily flat or straight. So you always want to do it and make sure you got it on because some of these will be bent, you know, from an old screwdriver if you're buying something from a secondhand store to make these out of. Okay, so we're ready to start grinding. Let's pick a number. So the original thickness of that blade was um, 20 thousandths. Now we have a particularly small watt screw and we want to, it's a 10 thousandths thick blade. This is what we need to fit the slot of the screw. And as you notice, this is a very teeny tiny little piece of steel. It's very easy to burn them under normal conditions. 
this is not a normal condition because we're using a carbide burr. It's a double cut carbide burr and it acts like a squirrel cage fan blowing air on this. And so, here we go. And you always want to hold down and over. Let me turn it back off. Every mechanism has play in it. If it didn't have play in it, you would never be able to move it. If you made the diameter of this and the diameter of this block over here the same size, you couldn't push it in there except with a press. Same with this. This is about a thousandths of an inch larger in diameter on the inside than this, than this chuck is. And it's built that way on purpose. So you can see we have some movement here side to side and you can rotate it a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to push down and over, and I typically use my thumb to push down and over. Takes the slop out, makes it accurate. Turning it back on. Okay, so. And here's the other side. Now we're going to take it out. We will turn our router off, our motor off, and we are going to test this and see what the size is. Right now it's 15 thousandths. I hope that's visible in your camera. This, this is now, ooh, we're, we're almost there. We got about 13 thousandths thickness on that blade, 12 thousandths thickness. We need to go down one more thousandths of an inch. One uh, cigarette paper, like the good old fashioned zigzags, those are one and a half thousandths thick. You can see how small we're working. I'm going to try it with one more time over here with just making sure I don't have any extra slop in it. So. I only needed three quarters of a thousandths off of that. So let's see where we're at now, because I pushed down a little extra hard on that thing. And right now, we are at ten thousandths on our blade. So we're done. Now we want to take some off the sides and make it twenty thousandths. So we're going to raise it back up. And I'll start right there. This time we have it oriented vertically, this way. We're putting it in, we're using the slot on the bottom. Okay. See, I'm not touching yet. There, I can hear it start to tick. There's a cut. All right, good, so we'll turn it off. So right now we have a blade that is 25 thousandths. So I've already cut off because it's such a small area. I've already taken off 15 thousandths in the width. And now we only need to go down five more thousandths. So I'm going to take my dial and run it down to about right there. We're looking for 20 thousandths. There's two sides of this blade. Take this out. We're going to see how we're looking. Okay, there's not a lot of difference between ten thousandths and twenty thousandths when you get down this small. You really should be wearing a, a or, um, magnifiers. So there's our twenty thousandths in width, and our thickness is ten thousandths. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. Okay, and then. When you're working on a watch, you need to make sure that you got nice, flat, straight, without any burrs, so you can take it and knock the burrs off of it with a small stone, so you don't go up a watch.